Hi, I'm Michelle, and today I'm guiding you through the four best positions to do your Kegel exercises in so that you can get the really best results and get them fast. So I'm gonna be taking you through the four positions straight away, and then we're gonna talk about when to use these different positions and also to when not to do your Kegel exercises. So there's a little bit of um, misunderstanding around about that as well. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. First position, and this is the best position if you're a beginner. Now, if you're not sure how to do your Kegels, just check my Kegel exercises video for beginners above. That outlines the technique. I'm not going through the whole technique today, but let's get into position. So lying down, first of all, this is a great position for a beginner because your pelvic floor muscles don't have to lift against gravity because you're lying down. So in lying down, coming down, it's important to have your knees bent. So you have your knees bent because that, that encourages an inward curve in your lower back. You don't wanna have your legs straight because then your back will flatten out. So inward curve in your back, knees just slightly apart, probably about hip width apart and lying down. So in this position, then you do the action of retracting, shortening the penis and stopping the flow of urine. So in that position there, and if you're in that position now, you could try that. You're breathing in and you're breathing out. And with the breath out, then shorten and tighten as if to stop the flow and then relax the muscles. So that's how you would do the exercise in that position. Now, if you can't feel it terribly well in this position, you could also do this in a recliner chair. Now, our next position is sitting, and this is a really effective position. Let's go through that now. So our second position is sitting. So sitting is a really great position because you can feel the muscles under the base lifting against gravity, so contracting. Also too, it's a much more convenient position because let's face it, most of us are sitting during the course of the day. So I've got a regular chair here. Your first step is to move forward and away from the back of the chair. So it's really important that you're not sitting back against the back of the chair, sit forward so that you have an inward curve in your lower back. In that position, your knees are slightly apart. And I just tend to incline just slightly forwards. So in that position there, feet are flat, hands on your thighs, and lengthen through your spine. So you're really wanting to be make sh making sure that you're lifting through the crown of your head and that your body is lengthened, not slumped. So in that position again, the same cue applies to shorten and tighten as if stopping the flow of urine. And you do that contraction and then you slowly relax. And when you do the contraction, you start with the breath out and then you try to resume your normal breathing as you're doing your exercise. That's really important. Also really important then to relax the pelvic floor muscles after you've used that position and done that exercise. Now, our third position is probably one of the most effective positions to get really fast results. Now, I'm talking about fast results for both continence and performance, if you can read between the lines. So standing, our muscles are going to lift against gravity, just like they are in sitting, so they have to work harder. So let's now move into standing, and I'll show you the standing position to use. Okay, so our standing position is feet slightly apart. Obviously, feet are flat. And then you're going to, again, lift up and lengthen your spine. So we're lifting our muscles against gravity. This is a really good way to make really good strength gains and to make them fast. Obviously, you're choosing the position that you can feel your exercises in best, but if you can get them going into standing or progress into standing, this is really going to help your gains. So I'll just come side on. The other great thing about standing is it's convenient to do them in a queue, isn't it? Or also to, um, I mean, anytime you're standing, but also too, you could stand side on to a mirror and you could actually watch the retraction. So you could watch the shortening, so it's really good for that visual feedback if you're not quite sure if you're doing your exercises correctly. So in that position then you're standing tall and once again lifting through the crown of your head so that your spine's tall, your chest is lifted, you imagine a string pulling up that direction and in that position you breathe in and then as you breathe out then shorten and as tighten as if you're stopping the flow 
and you hold that contraction. And if you're not sure about that, you'll be able to check my video on how many exercises to do. And that's coming up in the next week or so. So you might wanna to subscribe to catch that video. But so you're shortening and contracting, and then you're relaxing in that position. Now, our last position is your really most important position for performance. And I need you to read between the lines with this because to get this video through YouTube. So this is the position that you really want to use and use um, for practicing for real world because our muscles strengthen most effectively in the position that you strengthen them in. So let's go to that final fourth position. Okay, so our final fourth position is this position. So you can be on either all fours. And remember, I'm talking about performance for this position. So on all fours, inward curve in your back like that. With You can see that I've got my knees slightly apart there. Or you can rest down on your forearms there. And I think this is a really nice position. Not only is it a really functional position if you're needing to use this, the, your muscles in this position, but also too, you can often feel that you're lifting against gravity and you can feel the shortening. So that position there, and once again, you're breathing in. As you breathe out, you're contracting your muscles and then slowly relaxing them in a repeated manner. So they're the four positions that you need to use. Now, when do you use these positions? Well, some of the research has suggested that you actually do lying, sitting and standing positions every set, every set that you do or every, yeah, every time you exercise. I think that's really impractical. Um, it's very hard during the course of the day to be doing that. I suggest that you try to aim to do as many of your exercises or aim to do it towards doing as many of your exercises in standing as you can. If you're in a seated desk job, doing them sitting, or if you're a beginner, doing them lying down. But don't forget the importance of using them in the position that you need to use them and practicing that. So if, you, if you're exercising for continence, you, you're exercising the muscles in standing because that's when leakage is going to occur. If you're exercising for performance, then you might want to be doing them lying down. Now, finally, when not to do your Kegels. There is a myth that you should be using your, your muscles and doing your Kegel exercises as you walk and as you run. Now, what happens if you do that is you're constantly bracing your pelvic floor muscles. They don't get a chance to relax. And then you risk the pelvic floor muscle tightness, which is what we don't want. Your regular exercises, doing your strengthening, will strengthen for when you are walking and when you're running. So don't brace them during walking or running. Just do your exercises in the positions that I've talked about and then have faith in the fact that the muscles will strengthen and work for you well when you need them to. And then you can obviously be using them to contract before and during a cough before and during a sneeze, or before and during you lift something heavy to counteract the downward pressure. So there you have it in um, four easy steps, the four positions that you can use to strengthen your pelvic floor muscles. So I really hope this information helps you get the most benefit out of your strength gains. If, you, if this video has helped you, I'd really appreciate it if you can give it a like below because then YouTube suggests it to other men that can benefit as well. Thanks so much for watching today. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.